in God we trust, everyone else bring data. Now, I heard that said uh, repeatedly at various uh, tech conferences that I've attended over the last few years. It's a very old data scientist joke, but understanding new technologies uh, and uh, data really are key to business success. And data is the new oil, the new gold, depending on the, the way you want to view it. Uh, and it's now not only the responsibility of every business, but it's also a business-wide responsibility as well, because all employees are dealing with data in some form at the moment. And we're now doing it in a way that uh, is very often outside of a centrally managed uh, IT infrastructure. Now, to avoid being caught up by the rapid pace of change, I think businesses need to stop viewing data as an overhead and actually start seeing it as the thing that can make things better, a way of leveraging a competitive advantage. And uh, although more humdrum than uh, the exciting emerging industries, I think improvements in capturing and managing daily data really has the potential to drive incremental change and to inform strategy inside businesses as well. And that then in turn leads to better customer contact, it leads to better ability to upsell and cross-sell better products. And that all means a more profitable business and better bottom line. And just as the first industrial revolution changed the nature of work, forever bringing people under the same roof, the fourth looks set to continue to accelerate the trend away from in-office working to further affirm the 21st century cl cl cliche here of cafe work. I mean, that's what we're doing at the moment. We're working in all kinds of environments. It's work anywhere. And uh, that means uh, a lot if you're managing data. It means all kinds of questions around how you secure and protect and store that data. Well, to talk about the role of data and storage in the context of this new world and the fourth industrial revolution, I'm joined now by Jeremy Lichtenstein, Pinnacle uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises Solutions Architect. Jeremy, uh, it's been a while since we last spoke. Uh, good to catch up with you again. Just firstly, what is your sense of business out there? Are you starting to see the South African economy open up a little bit more than the last time we spoke? Uh, how's it, Michael? Yeah, good to be back. Um, you know, business is definitely picking up again. It seems like uh, industries are more well excited to, to get the ball rolling again now that we're coming out of the on the other side of lockdown um, and also keen to see what enhancements technology has to offer their business to improve things and uh, more specifically how their data can help to improve their business and their bottom line. And in that context, how important is data and storage given its role in driving the fourth industrial revolution in this age where we're working from everywhere? I think it couldn't be more critical than ever. Um, just, yeah, it's it's quite something. Like I, I think companies are starting to realize more and more just how much of an influence their IT infrastructure has on their day-to-day -day operations. Um, uh, I mean, I've got quite a, a few friends in the data science world, and they, they've shared quite uh, a lot of interesting projects that they're busy working on for, for you know, in various industries. Um, and yeah, like the, the, there's some really cool things that I never would have thought of using data for um, that they are, I suppose, finding fun things to do. <laughs> Can you g give me an example, Jeremy? Uh, I can't actually, because a lot of them are, are, are confidential, but um, yeah, there, there's some interesting, uh, I suppose, in the retail space, just looking at customer trends and just seeing like buying patterns. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would love to give you more uh, insight on that, but you know, damn uh, those NDAs. Would, <laughs> yeah, I completely understand. But I do think you know, for businesses, it's in the data that you get the mm. insights. And you know, data without leveraging that data really isn't very useful. But it's taking the data and then applying some kind of uh, machine learning or algorithm or AI to, to tease out those insights. And if you want to understand how consumer purchasing patterns and behavior are changing because of COVID, because we're not traveling to the office morning and evening uh, anymore, then you know, leveraging that data is going to give you those insights. So I think critical. What are some of the key trends that you see when looking at how businesses are protecting their data, given the move to remote working? Jeez. Well, I suppose quite a big one is, I guess, VDR. Um, I think we spoke about that a little bit last time, but it's just about moving the data away from uh, the end, well, from the end user's laptop and onto the server environment. Um, so 
Uh, I mean, I was fortunate enough that I got to attend HPE's Technology Solutions Summit last week, and they were talking about some really cool uh, technologies where these um, 3D animation houses are literally virtualizing the entire uh, workspace. Um, and all the compute and graphic, well, all the all those graphic intensive applications are happening on the back end instead of on the um, on that end user's computer. So if in the event that something does happen to their laptop or workstation, like there's actually no, uh, there's no risk to the company of their data getting out because everything's still sitting at head office or in the data center of their choice. Yeah, I think it's a good example because with the proliferation of data, uh, I think many organizations may be finding that their data is outgrowing their PCs or their workstations. So now the question is, uh, you know, if you haven't got a, a cloud strategy to manage your data, whether or not you should be um, thinking of one in earnest. And I often think here of the, the smaller type businesses in the South African ecosystem. It's often one of the key findings uh, in the annual surveys on cloud readiness. The, the smaller size businesses are perhaps a little bit slower to, to catch up. What do you see as some of the biggest challenges uh, that businesses are facing regarding data protection and disaster recovery with more people working remotely? It happened to me the other day, just on a personal level, changing laptops. My old laptop finally uh, gave up the ghost and the screen stopped working, but fortunately um, uh, the, the rest of the hardware was fine. So I could shift everything across. But in error, and I'm going to admit a, a, a real schoolboy error here, I deleted uh, my stack of videos. Um, and because the folder was too big to go into the deleted items, uh, it was gone forever. I mean, things can happen. Uh, there's human error here. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and that actually happens a lot more than I think we give ourselves credit for. Um, geez, yeah, well, I mean... Trying to think where to start because that's a very big uh, um, discussion point. Um, so I guess for the for the smaller company, I mean, there's there's a lot more technologies coming out to to give them a sort of uh, easier entry point into the into the tech space so that they can start protecting their data much better. Like, uh, I mean, a great example is the the new MSA storage array from uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and where they can it's it's they've they've made some really cool changes to allow the smaller businesses to actually start implementing these arrays, um, and they've got a lot more data protection built into them uh, to I suppose mitigate those unforeseen issues. Um, and I mean, depending on the budget, there's all kinds of crazy replication solutions that can be put into place to to protect us from having those issues come up. Um, we actually had it on the show with Teams as well, where we, we thought one of these interviews was being recorded on Teams, only to find uh, that it didn't record automatically in the background, then could go and recover the interview because it was, uh, um, and, and thanks to the chaps at Business Tech, it was stored uh, with a redundancy solution in the cloud. Is that the sort of disaster recovery um, uh, thinking that companies need to start putting into place here, just to have kind of a plan B, C, and, and potentially even D. Yeah, um, it's it's about making sure that when when all else fails, you can't have another way to get your data back. Um, like, I mean, in in a lot of cases, I mean, to, to speak a bit of tech and I suppose show the, the nerdy side of me, um, the, there's a technology called RAID 5. Um, and RAID 5 is all about making sure that if something happens to a, a disk, um, the the other disks can recover from from that failure, um, but it's never good enough to just have that one that one disk failure. The 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 storage arrays are having to make sure that uh, if you have two disks or three or even four disks fail, that your data still carries on ticking. Um, so I mean that, that's basically your first line of defense. But then after that, you also got to make sure that you've got backups in place. Um, in case uh, some sort of critical issue happens like uh, ransomware or mm. you know, I suppose even in the event of uh, your data leaking through, um, I suppose someone clicking on a malicious link uh, that maybe causes some, some data breach on your, for your organization just so that you can recover um, no matter what, what the circumstance that's caused that, that issue. Because um, we never really know what 
what will cause cause the failure. Um, it's it's just about making sure that you plan effectively so that you can recover from that as quickly as possible. Yeah, and and in that planning, do some scenario planning. What would happen t- tomorrow if you were to lose? all of your sales presentations, uh, all of those those key documents that you've got set up as templates, and how quickly would you be able to get back up and running? Or would that set your business back a day, a week, a month, uh, and then start planning back from there in terms of investing in solutions? What sort of solutions should companies consider to solve some of these, cha- these challenges? What are some of the exciting solutions that HPE has got at the moment? So, well... One of my favorites is the store once uh, offering that they have. Um, it's basically a, an appliance-based backup um, where you can have your, your data replicating to a standalone appliance that pretty much manages the whole process for you, um, but then taking it a step further and you can start to have multiple uh, iterations of these appliances at different sites. Um, and they fully replicate between the different locations. So. If something goes wrong with your your copies at the head office, you can revert to a, a different backup at another location, be it at a, a separate branch office or even a well, uh, the likes of a Terraco, for example, um, mm. where they can store their data there. Um, which I mean, it's all about making sure that the what's it called? Oh, just. Just that your like your data is being backed up seamlessly, and in the event of an issue, um, it's alerting your IT your IT team so that they can react to the problems. Um, I suppose more effectively rather than just trying to uh, recover and I'm trying to think of a good way to put it. Um, yeah, I guess just to make them more effective. So they they they're focusing on business innovation and. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm not. I'm not explaining this very well. <laughs> no, it's a, it's um, fine. It's technical, and uh, and I think you know one of the big the issues for for businesses is trying to cut through the the array of technical solutions and bring that back to business strategy and bring it back to well, what is my contingency plan and what is the impact on my day to day operations if I should have some kind of uh, data breach or loss of data. Uh, and, and ultimately, I mean, that's where HPE comes in because uh, your title is solution architect. You sit down and uh, you design these solutions for businesses. If you look at this from a competitive advantage, what are some of the, the key differentiators that businesses should be looking for when choosing a data protection and a disaster recovery solution? Because there are many out there. No, oh, it's, I suppose... I think a, something that cust, well that companies should definitely be looking at is just to make sure that the the IT provider fully understands their environment and that if they are looking to to um, refresh the infrastructure that they running a, a proper assessment they're looking at that data of how the systems are running on a day to day basis they're seeing um, so they uh, I suppose they want to try and understand uh, where the business is going so that. If they are putting down a solution that it will, I suppose, t- stand the test of time. Um, I mean, there's a there's a great offering from HPE called GreenLake. Um, I mean, it's for the um, for the large enterprises, um, but it's it's basically offering you whatever you need as a service, rather than you having to fork out the um, well, fork out that uh, financial investment up front. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they work with you as the bus- as your business grows and based on the data trends of uh, the, well, the operation, the day-to-day operations of those systems um, to actually see, well, what's it, what would be the best solution for the company? I mean, um, uh, in the data analytics world, they, they well, or data science world, they, they do a lot of things in, in containerized platforms, which, um, like that's still very new to me um, just because I'm more focused on the tech side of things, but it's just amazing to see what, how they can basically just uh, produce a, an environment for the kind of data that they need to process and then uh, get rid of it as quickly as they needed it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I think no, that speaks Jeremy to the need for businesses through a crisis to be able to have flexibility. And we've seen businesses furlough employees and scale down operations through the crisis. But just as quickly as they've had to do that, 
you and I were chatting offline about um, how many of those projects that were iced are now coming back online. And so you need to be able to expand as the opportunity set uh, grows for your business. And I think equally, you need these solutions that are able to flex uh, and, and shrink or, or grow as and when uh, your business needs them to. Uh, Jeremy, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Always a great pleasure chatting to you about uh, this world of, of data and the various solutions that HPE uh, has to offer. Take care. Thanks, Michael. That was Jeremy Lichtenstein, Pinnacle HPE Solutions Architect, talking about the role of data, the role of storage in the fourth industrial revolution here on Business Talk with me, Michael Avery.